Hello, Augies and members around the world. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Jim, KG6TW. It says, I live in a mountainous region of North Georgia and participate in several public service events, such as the Six Gap Century Bicycle Ride and the Georgia Death race. Oh, right. I see who dies first. The two local repeaters we use struggle to provide coverage due to the mountainous terrain. I remember one of your videos talking about ground wave propagation from your home QTH to your mobile. That would have been a very long time ago. I think it was one of the training videos. Would you do another video on ground wave propagation focusing on the applicable frequency range and propagation distance in areas of mountainous terrain? Yeah, and ground wave does work very well for that. Ground wave doesn't care about mountains. Let's take a look at different kinds of propagation. Slightly curved earth, we'll call this a an antenna and we'll put uh, receivers here and so on. Okay, we'll start with AM broadcast because the ground wave for that. A ground wave hugs the ground. It goes like this. Okay, and if there are mountains, it'll go happily like this, hugging the ground. It hugs the ground. Now, AM radio is mostly done with ground wave. Now there is the line of sight where you're taking this and this can see, you know, another antenna off over here as long as this is up off the surface. Now you will get some refraction. I understand that this is line of sight, the direct wave, okay. Then there is the ground here with the ionosphere up here, okay? And it goes and hits this and comes back down somewhere. And we call this the sky wave. Now note that there's a skip zone in here. You can't hear this guy in here. You can hear him here maybe on ground wave, but you gotta go out a ways with this. This can continue on, of course. So let's just deal with ground wave and now let's look at this chart. This is from the ARRL handbook. Typical HF ground wave range is a function of frequency. I will tell you right now, this is really optimistic in terms of distance. My experience is that it's nowhere near this amount. It's very much a function of frequency. It says if you've got two stations at 30 megahertz, you can go up to 10 miles. No, I don't believe that. You might get a couple miles. 20 megahertz, 15 meters, around 25. I was once up on top of a mountain talking to a guy across Los Angeles down in Orange County, and he did not believe me where I said I was. In fact, he refused to talk to me anymore thinking I was a pirate. Let's go down to 10 megahertz. The ground wave goes out, it says, to 30, under 40 miles. Now let's start working down here. Seven is in here with a ground wave of about 40 miles. Okay, and three and a half megahertz. You can go maybe 60. Now if you go down into the broadcast band, you can see it goes a long ways. AM, the AM band mostly counts on ground wave. Now of course, as you've got a transmitter here, and we're looking down now, this is plan view, okay? And it will have some sort of a weird shape zone around it, and these are made very carefully for advertisers that know how far this will get out. You get a clear signal here, you get a bad signal here, okay? And that is for all day, daytime uh, broadcasting. And this could be eight to 20 miles to where you get something that an advertiser will pay for. Okay, and you're hearing the ground wave on AM, unless you're doing it at night. If you're doing it at night, you may get sky wave propagation from some signals. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. Okay, but it's the daytime where the advertisers want to advertise. So they're looking for this thing. 
If you are trying to do something, say with something in a valley, and you've got some peaks like this, okay, what do you do? You use ground wave. Let's do this on 80 meters, okay, because we're going on the ground. We're not going up to the ionosphere. So if you do 80 meters, you'll find that that propagation will hug the ground right over that mountain to somewhere over there. I was once helping a guy up in the Gunnison River Canyon. He was the guy who controlled the gate valve that filled the canal that went over to the Uncompahgre River. We can put another station over here, another station here, and usually 80 and 40. 160 will work, but antennas for this get really unwieldy. An 80 meter is pretty high. Vertical, it's got to be vertical propagation, okay? If it's horizontal, it's going to try going up. But vertical propagation goes along here. Note that using the ground as part of your waveguide, so to speak, is quite lossy. So this won't go real far. But a 100 watt antenna down in this hole should be able to talk to this 100 watt antenna over here with very steady coverage. Okay, vertical polarization, you can even get the so-called ham sticks, which are an easy way to transmit 80 meters, say, by putting this on the bumper of your car or RV, okay, and you'll get this ground wave. Try it first, of course. It, yes, it is somewhat subject to heliospheric phenomenon, but 80 is usually where you will want to use this. You'll get the most. Now, during the day, it's not going to give you a sky wave, but it will give you a ground wave. 40, as we saw from this chart, 40 meters is right in here. And you got about 40 to 50 miles. Right in here is 3.5. So you can get even more distance. I would not bother with anything higher than that. If you do want to do something on 60, you probably can. I've never had a QSO on 60, and I'm not sure I ever will. So there you have it. A little bit of an introduction to different methods of propagation, modes, I guess you would call them, and a little bit about the ground wave and how it works. Give it a try. Remember, vertical polarization, okay, it can go out. A good number of miles. Now this is entirely different from NVIS. NVIS actually bounces off the ionosphere and it works on 80 at night because you otherwise you got to transit the D layer which will absorb all of 80. It works during the day on 40. NVIS is horizontal propagation. Ground wave is vertical propagation. If you mix up propagation modes, one guy vertical, one guy horizontal, probably won't work as well. Now, do vertically polarized waves stay vertical? Yeah, kind of, mostly. If they hit the ionosphere, they're converted to circular, so that's a whole different thing entirely. So there you have it. I hope that helps. So for all you ground wave enthusiasts out there, get out your AM radios and listen to talk shows or Maybe better yet, get out your FM radio and listen to some music. A lot of car manufacturers are trying to do away with AM radios in cars very simply because nobody uses AM in the car. Uh, they use FM. FM's a lot higher fidelity. AM will allow you up to 5 kilohertz commercially, 3 kilohertz if you're ham, whereas FM will give you up to 15 kilohertz, which is still not truly high fidelity because high fidelity will go up into around 20 gigahertz. Now my hearing stops at eight kilohertz. I checked that out against my organ. I was playing a register and got up to where I could hear the key and then couldn't hear the key. And I said, Loretta, are you hearing that? And she says, shut that stupid thing off. You're killing my ears. I couldn't even hear it. So this has created a little bit of a problem for me because I tend to hear communications as very bassy without the, the high-pitched treble to put the crispness on it. But I survive. So, and you will too. By the way, if you're doing some experiments on this, let me know how they come out. Reference this video number and 
send it to me at askdave, all one word, at A-R-R-L dot O-R-G. And if you'd like to help this channel out, click join. It's right there on the same page that you're watching this video. And until we next meet, 73.